Hello! In this video I will show you how to create your own heat map with Excel. A heat map is a data visualization technique that shows the magnitude of a phenomenon as color in two dimensions. The variation of the color and the intensity provides visual representation of how the data varies. In this first step we have historical data of Toronto average monthly temperatures from year 1940 to uh, year 2012 and we've used this uh, matrix to create heat map. We, we are going to be using conditional formatting. Conditional formatting lives on the home tab in styles group and when you click the drop down you have several options and we're going to be using uh, color scales. So let's first select our temperatures. Uh, we will uh, leave the headers and the first column uh, unselected and use only the temperatures to represent in the heat map. Going to condition formatting, selecting our color scales, we have some preset color scales from uh, Excel. You can use any of them if you want, uh, but I would prefer to customize and use my own colors. So I'll go to more rules, and in this case, we'll have to uh, select whether it will be two color scale or three color scale. Let's go with three color scale, and uh, for our lowest value or the minuses, I'll go with blue. So anything that is winter will be represented in blue. Uh, the midpoint will be our spring and um, autumn values, so I'll leave them to yellow, it will be okay. And the highest values will be the positive, up to 20 something uh, summer values, so I'll go with something like orange. Let's use this. So these are the colors we're going to use and once we've selected the colors we click OK and it will be implemented on our table. Looking good. Now we can see that in year 1945 January was uh, one of the coldest. When we go closer to the year 2000 you can see 1994 was even colder. Uh, the average value of minus 12.4 degrees is very cold. Uh, December, you can see, is not so cold as the first two months of the year. But you can see this December in 1989 was pretty cold, right? It's the same for the summer months. And you can see the warmer temperature are clearly defined with darker red, for example, July in 87, 89 was warmer than uh, the, the next two years and really warm in 1999. Pretty much the same uh, temperature was in 2012. We can see that this summer was warmer because even June was higher average uh, temperature and the last three years from 10 to 12, uh, July was very hot. What we can do more with this data, we can represent it without uh, looking at the numbers, just show the colors. So I'll copy and paste same table on this side just to be able to compare the two results. And we'll select the whole uh, temperature range on the second one. With conditional formatting we are not able to remove uh, the numbers, but if we go to our number format we are able to select custom and type some special formatting and see how we can remove our um, values. So we'll be using semicolons, we have to type three semicolons and this will help our data labels to be removed. They're still behind, you can see them in the formula bar, but they're hidden for uh, the viewers. And 
In some cases, this might be a better representation if you have a dashboard and you just want to see uh, like some trends and patterns. You don't need to see the exact data. Moving on to the next step, we have average monthly maximum temperature. Again, for the uh, region of Toronto, and um, the period is 1940 until 2012. This time, we'll create the heat map differently with uh, using uh, two different condition of formatting, less than and greater than, and we have some ranges below 0, 0 to 10, 10 to 20, 20 to 25 degrees and above 25 degrees. Let's start uh, creating the rules. So we'll start with the less than zero. And we have to find our custom uh, format color. And this is the closest one. Okay another less than this time we're going to choose 10 degrees and now we have to find the lighter uh, blue this is not exactly the same but similar what happens here is the second rule overrides the first rule so at the end when we add all of the new rules we'll go to manage rules uh, window and try to rearrange the rules in this in, in such way so it will perform uh, each of them in a special order so the result is as expected as we were hoping. Um, the third rule will be again less than this time we'll select 20 degrees and find our green color this is more likely. Okay, the last of the less than um, rules will be 25 degrees and we need to use the yellow. Okay, and the very last rule that we're going to use will be greater than because we have over 25 so let's say instead of 25 and over we'll, we'll select 24.9 because we want to include 25 in the rule as well otherwise uh, 25 won't be um, included in in the previous rule as well so let's go to custom and find our color it's something between orange and red okay okay so once we've created our five rules we'll go to conditional formatting manage rule options and we will rearrange uh, the rules the way it should be um, going in order so which one we need move to the top it will be below zero so with these arrows here we're going to move below zero to the top then we'll move the next one will be below 10 the third one below 20 below 25 and the last will be the greater than 24.9 and this is our final result i can copy uh, the previous table from here so we can compare them easily um, I'll leave it to you to choose which one to use um, once we have a particular range it's easier for us to say oh these are the months where the maximum was all, almost always below zero and you can see December uh, has been a lot warmer than January and February. November never had below zero and even had above 10 degrees in some cases. Um, I'll leave it to you to uh, see which heat map works for you most, but I wanted to show you uh, both ways that we can do that.
Thanks for watching. Hope you like it. Hope to see you again. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share.